Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Sewing Machine Rehab today. This video is the second video in my series of restoring a Singer 301 or 301A. In our last video, we talked about some of the tools and supplies that you would need if you wanted to tackle a project like this. And then we also removed the cover of this 301, the nose plate and the bottom cover, and we took a little look underneath. So what I would like to do is just keep moving forward. And if you are restoring a 301, uh, I always suggest taking off this bed pretty much at the beginning, this little bed extension. And the reason why is when you're moving your machine around, it's very tempting to grab it and lift the machine by it while you're holding this bed extension, which really isn't good for keeping this functioning properly. To remove it, you have two screws. And um, if they're stuck, if you find that you get your screwdriver uh, in there and you can't turn them, spray them first with a little bit of penetrating oil just around the screw and maybe up here on the bed so it can leak down into this little crevice. Give it a couple wiggles and let it sit. And hopefully that will uh, be enough to loosen the screw for you. They're a nice chrome plated head uh, screw and um, I just find that I want to keep them as in nice of condition as possible. So I don't force these if, if I can't get them out on the first try. So nice, uh, good fitting screwdriver is going to go into the head of this screw and just give it a twist. And as this comes out, pay attention because you should have a couple washers that come off with this screw. And this is a hinge screw. You'll find that there are several of them on this machine. But if I look at these washers up close, the first washer that comes off is just a flat washer. The second washer that comes off, I'll set this down so I can show you, is a little bit different. It's cupped. It always makes me think of a contact uh, lens. I wear contacts and um, for some reason I just think of my contacts when I take this one off. But it should go on the screw. When you have your hinge screw, it should go on cupped up. So if this were your finger and you were putting in a contact lens, your contact would sit on your finger cupped up. And then the second washer would go on before you put the hinge screw back on. But I'm just going to take these both and set them aside, both washers in my hinge screw. And then I'm going to flip the machine around Okay, on the other side of the bed is another screw and it's a different size than the hinge screw that we just took out. So the good part there is that you won't mix the two up. It's definitely very obvious what screw goes on what side. This one also screws out uh, lefty loosey and um, or counterclockwise. And you might want to hold on to the bed as you take this second screw out because the bed will drop down. And if you were worried about chipping paint or something like that, you might want to hold on to it. I never understood how hard it was to work around a camera. All the videos I've watched on YouTube now I understand what they're talking about. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this bed, pull it off. And here is the other hinge screw that you will take off of the machine. And so when the hinge screw is in the bed, the head of 
the hinge screw here is actually inside this metal and the metal's rotating around it every time you lift it up and set it down. But then of course, the threaded part of the screw is screwed right into the machine. So now that I have them off, I will go ahead and bag up these parts right away. I don't want to lose them. When we finish the machine, we will put the bed extension on. It will be one of the last things that I put on the machine. So I take my little parts, two washers, two screws, and the bed extension, and I go ahead and just bag it up, and it will wait for me to clean it now. Okay, next we are going to remove the hand wheel because that is how we are going to get to some of the bobbin winder parts. And I'm just gonna flip this around here. Hopefully you can see it. I love these shiny chrome stop motion knobs. So um, the hand wheel uh, has several parts that will bag up together. Uh, the stop motion knob is for when you're sewing and uh, you go to wind your bobbin. Um, if you rotate this knob, just the, just the knob, not the hand wheel, to the left, it will stop and hit a little metal bump back here. And when you do that, the idea was that once the stop motion has been uh, enacted, the needle bar will no longer move as the hand wheel turns. I always check to make sure that that is actually working properly. Now, this hand wheel, I, I, if I put the stop motion on and I start turning the hand wheel, I'm still getting a little bit of motion here. And I'm pretty sure I know why. <laughs> because I removed the hand wheel to look at it already, but I'll show you when we get inside and it's something that I will fix uh, before I put the machine back together. So I hope that wasn't too weird of an explanation, but the first thing that you're going to want to do is to remove this little screw right here. And I will take it off first. Again, just make sure that you have a well-fitting screwdriver because all of this is pretty chrome-plated metal. And I'm just gonna twist this off. It takes a couple seconds. And pull it out. So you'll notice on the screw, there's only threads up at the very top. And this is really dirty. There's a lot of varnished oil on it, but we'll clean it up before we put it back. The next step is to remove this stop motion knob. And all you do is you hold your hand wheel still with your hands and just twist it counterclockwise. And it should, there we go. Okay, so this is our stop motion knob and our little screw is going to go right in this hole when we put it back together. I will set this aside and then next we will just pull off the hand wheel. Now there is a part here, this is the stop motion washer and sometimes they can be stuck up against the hand wheel just because of the varnished oil. So um, if you can pull it off first, that's fine. But a lot of times I just press my fingers against it, grip the hand wheel, and pull them both off together. So inside here is a stop motion washer. And then just the hand wheel itself. So I have an issue I'm noticing with the uh, needle bar still wanting to move, even when I've uh, turned on the stop motion uh, for bobbin winding. And one of the reasons why is that 
This thing is so full of grease. When I took it off the first time, my hands, like I accidentally grabbed this end here and they were just covered in grease. I wiped out a bunch of it here. So the grease only goes on the gears here. It doesn't go inside this hole. You shouldn't have all of this grease like you see on the inside of this machine. Uh, it's all over the counterbalance. I don't know if you can see this metal part back here that spins around. That's a counterbalance for the hand wheel. It's all over. And um, I have a feeling that all that extra grease is probably messing up uh, the function of the uh, stop motion feature. So we'll get that cleaned up. Go ahead and grab a bag. And in this case, I'll put the stop motion washer, the stop motion knob and screw in a bag but I'm going to let the hand wheel have its very own bag because it is just so nasty. And I don't want that getting all over the other parts that will just make it harder to clean them. So now we've removed the hand wheel. Now I can see the screw that I need to get to for one of the bobbin winding parts. And since I have the machine turned this way, we'll take this part off first and then we'll deal with another part of the bobbin winder. Um, so this little arm here swings up, it hits up against the hand wheel after you uh, turn on the stop motion feature and the hand wheel spins and the needle doesn't and this little tire runs along the hand wheel which spins the bobbin that's on the other side, and that's how you wind a bobbin. But we wanna take this off so we can clean these parts. And um, you might want to reach for a heftier screwdriver for this. And they can be stuck, and I probably keep saying this, but any screw on your machine can be stuck. Don't be surprised if you have one that really frustrates you. Uh, I have yet to have a machine that didn't have at least one stuck screw. Um, I won't say I cried over any, but I almost did. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a well-fitting screwdriver in this slot and left to loosen, whoops. And I'll just keep turning it and you will feel it pull away. And I want you to pay attention to several parts that you're going to find when this comes off. Okay. Some of these parts, uh, if you don't see them, check in this hole here because they might have just been stuck in the hole. So, on this part of the bobbin winder, oops, we have first what will come off the end of the screw is, oh, they're stuck together. <laughs> this little spring, which has a mind of its own today. Okay, have the dropsies today. Um, you have this little spring followed by a little tab that I just dropped on the floor. Let me get it this little metal piece that has a tab. And actually, there's a little hole right here, if you can see that. And once we put this back together, this little metal tab that sticks out is going to rest in that hole. There is another washer, and then a hinge screw which is obviously we wouldn't be able to lift that arm up and down if, if it there, there was not a hinge screw in there. And then the bobbin winder uh, arm itself. And this one has a nice rubber tire on it. 
whoever I purchased this machine from had replaced this tire, but for cleaning, it just peels off. It's super easy to take off and on. If you have a tire on your machine that's all crumbly and just looks worse for wear, you can find these online. The Singer Featherweight Shop sells them, I believe. There are people on Etsy and eBay. Uh, different sewing part uh, stores online have them. And before you order this tire, I would just make a list and get all the parts at once, like your uh, rubber feet and if you need a felt drip pad and that sort of thing, and just get them all at the same time. LED light bulb. So I will take these and start a bag and uh, set them aside. And we'll add to that this bag in just a second, the rest of the bobbin winding system. So I'm going to turn the machine around and put some of my screwdrivers away. So the rest of the system that we want to remove is right here. And I bet I can give you a little bit better view. There we go. So this little part has a lot of pieces, surprisingly, but when you wind a bobbin on a 301, you don't set it on the spool pin up top. You set your thread, or I'm sorry, you don't set the spool of thread on the spool pin up top. You actually set it on this pin. So then the thread comes off the spool of thread here and it wraps under this little disc here, which is springy. There's a little spring inside. It goes behind it and then up to the bobbin. And this gives it tension so that it winds nice and tight. Um, so I like to take all these little pieces off and apart. And you'll notice you have a screw right here and a screw here. Take this screw out first if if you can get it out because if you take this screw out and take this whole piece off it's really hard if this screw is screw is kind of uh, stuck it's hard to get it while you're just holding this in your hand so and I would say if you if you fight this screw and it just won't come loose just leave it and clean all the parts in place don't damage the head of this screw but you just take your screwdriver this is also lefty loosey it's gonna spin out and i want you to watch i hope i don't drop this on the floor like everything else it did come apart but i'll put it back together so you can see so this is sitting here and if i tip it over you see i have this little cupped metal dish which this spring which is what gives it the tension is inside and on top of it rest another it's almost like a washer but it's not it's very cupped and it fits over the top of the spring and then the screw sits on top of that and that screws into this hole so all these parts all clean Sometimes they're really dirty, but in this case, this, screen, this uh, spring is not actually that bad. But if I feel like this uh, doesn't have a nice springy effect to it when I, when I pull on it while it's still on the, the machine, then either this is really dirty and gunky inside, or in some cases, this spring's been totally missing. So the last part we'll take off for the bobbin winder is this. And what's cool is you'll notice when you take the screw out, there's a, a real uh, oblong slot here. And down on the bed of the machine is another one right here. So when this sets on the machine, there's a little knob 
on the bottom of this that fits in that oblong slot and you can slide it to the left or right. When you're having a bobbin that's winding too much to the right or too much to the left, you can loosen the screw and move it right or left and eventually you'll get your bobbin so it's winding evenly back and forth and you don't have a lopsided bobbin. So I'm gonna take all of these little parts and bag them with the rest of my bobbin winding parts. And that's it. So I think what we'll do is we'll stop here. And when we come back, I'd like to go ahead and start removing a few other parts that I like to take them off just because they're in the way. We will remove the tension, this thread guide, and both of these thread guides I'll show you how to disassemble the tension. And then if we have time, maybe we'll start on some of the uh, parts in the nose, the needle bar and the presser bar. Um, but I'm not sure that we want to try to fit that all into one sitting. So anyway, I hope you are enjoying following along. Uh, if you have questions or comments or uh, requests, please put them down below. I read every one and uh, hopefully we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.